Titchfield, home of Shakespeare's Lost Years. The quality of mercy is not strained. It droppeth as the gentle rain from heaven upon the place beneath. It is twice blessed. It blesses him that gives and him that takes. What's this all about, Ennis Barn? Well, there was a barn built in 1411 for Henry V's army to go over and fight the campaign that ended in the Battle of Agincourt. It was another D-Day invasion of France, but only in 1415. So what do I mean by a barn? I mean a farmer's store, a place where one could hold barn dances. But in this case, in the case of the Great Barn, it was used to victual Henry V's army. A victual, for the uninitiated, means to supply his army. This magnificent barn was built on the orders of Henry Beaufort, who happened to be Henry V's uncle and a very important politician of the day. He was also Bishop of Winchester, and the Bishop of Winchester controlled Titchfield Abbey. Now it's Titchfield Abbey where we believe Shakespeare spent his lost years. What I hear you say? Shakespeare working as a school teacher at Titchfield Abbey? Well, it wasn't called Titchfield Abbey in the 1580s. It was known as Place House. Place House was the home of Shakespeare's patron, the Earl of Southampton, the third Earl to be precise. And it was the third Earl that gave Shakespeare a thousand pounds reputedly to join the Chamberlain's men and build the Globe Theatre in London. Never mind the Globe Theatre and the chamber pot men. Let's get back to this barn. What's it all about? It's about performing Shakespeare's plays in a place that he may have lived, loved and worked. Yes, Titchfield is the place, according to some experts, where Shakespeare spent his lost years. Only they're not lost anymore. And we have some well-known Shakespeare experts on our side here. At 21, the baptism of Shakespeare's twins is recorded at Stratford-upon-Avon, and then he virtually disappears. Seven years later, he's being reviewed as a successful London actor and playwright. These formative years, the so-called lost years, are one of the great mysteries of English literature. Where did he go? And what was he doing? There are several competing theories, but a very surprising answer could lie here in Hampshire, far away from London or Stratford-upon-Avon. Theatre director Stuart Trotter thinks Shakespeare was here, working for the Southampton family at their country estate in Titchfield. Really? Those are some famous folks. So what are you going to do with this barn? We're going to build a train, a walk through time from 1411 to 1649 that people can explore from the Great Barn to the Abbey, also known as Place House. To the cottage, only a few hundred yards away from Titchfield Abbey, better known as the Old Grammar School, where we believe Shakespeare was teaching in his lost years. Then into the heart of Titchfield itself, to the tombs of the Earls of Southampton here in St Peter's Church. Oh, for a muse of fire that would ascend the brightest heaven of invention, a kingdom for a stage, princes to act and monarchs to behold the swelling scene. Then should the warlike Harry, like himself, assume the port of Mars, and at his heels leashed in like hounds should famine, sword, and fire crouch for employment. But pardon, gentles all, the flat, unraised spirits that have dared on this unworthy scaffold to bring forth so great an object. There's more. We're going to have a visitor centre with an exhibition all about Henry V and his Agincourt campaign. An Elizabethan theatre where you will see Shakespeare's plays performed in a building that he would have known and visited. An app to take with you on the walk 
where the experts can tell you all about this corner of England and the vital role it played not only in one of the most important battles in history, but in the development of the greatest playwright who ever lived. What sort of experts? Well, people like Stuart Trotter, who's written Love's Labour's Found and Our Cousin Will, all about the Southamptons and Shakespeare. How about Simon Callow? He mentions Titchfield in his one-man show, Being Shakespeare, written by none other than Professor Jonathan Bate. First-hand evidence brought to you by Shakespeare lovers. And all based in this old barn. Right, but not just any old barn. This barn was built in 1411. Yes, that's right, 1411. That's four years before the Battle of Agincourt. You remember Shakespeare's famous play, Henry V? Oh, for the muse of fire. On this day, St. Crispin's Day. And all that jazz. Well, that was just one of the plays to be inspired by this barn. Love's Labour's Lost was another play to be inspired by the whole of Titchfield and Place House and all the characters surrounding it. We're going to build a sepulchre, a tomb. That's an exhibition, a museum, dedicated to Henry V and his battle and campaign in that barn. Do you know that this is possibly the oldest and largest surviving medieval barn in Europe? potentially the world. It's like a cathedral inside. Have a look. Oh, don't you love oak just as thick as this? We're already performing four Shakespeare plays a year. Four Shakespeare plays from a little company in England. But we need your help to bring history to life and to stream those performances worldwide from this wonderful venue in the Great Bar. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Thou art more lovely and more temperate. Rough winds do shake the darling buds of May, and summer's lease has all too short a date. Ultimately, we need to raise £750,000 to complete this wonderful project. But we're going to do it in bite-sized pieces. So why not have a look at the schedule below and the wonderful rewards that you can get by getting involved. The most important thing is getting people to visit. In real life or by streaming technology. So we can tell them about Shakespeare and just how important this area is to his story. With your donations, we can open up the dark period of Shakespeare's life and give everyone the chance to explore the lost years of the greatest playwright the world has known. Titchfield, home of Shakespeare's lost years.